Okay, and we are now recording. Okay, great. Thanks, Stephanie. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Andra, welcome back. I believe it's your turn. Thank to take you. Minutes. Oh, I, I can someone else start? I, I won't be quite ready for another five minutes. Let's see. Let's I can see. fill in the gaps, Basu, if you know. Yeah, okay. Andra, just let me know when you're ready to take over. Does that work, Andra? She might have had to step away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's go over our vision charge and some of our metrics here. Um, so we do want to work cooperatively with the town and community to raise awareness and achieve results with a sense of urgency. And uh, Lori was talking, emailing me separately about um, the festival. It was also I've also been thinking about the festival. How do we make that a platform for us to launch so many initiatives that we have? So the more awareness that we create during that one day that we have uh, with the community, it's going to be very powerful, I think, uh, to help us lead the charge on what we could do to address the climate change. Um, Ste uh, Stephanie, question on the goals, because I had an action item last time to look at the town manager goals for 2024. And what I noticed, I struggled to find it. Um, I mean, I found it, but it's, it has information, it's in draft. I don't know if there's an approved version, Stephanie. That... I have to find out. Yeah. Okay. I can I can ask, but I'm not going to know before okay. the end of this meeting. Okay. So I'll just take an action item for me. Well, we want to have a discussion at the next meeting to review the town manager goals for 2024. So Stephanie, if you can take the action item to put that as part of the meeting packet, and we can review it together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, our five pillars continue to stay the same. Heat pump, honor looking at region and state, solar, transportation, and, and pace. Uh, for our metrics, we still continue to have pretty low participation. And we talked about this last time as well. Uh, with the transportation education series, we just have to make sure that we're, uh, when we have these flyers created, we send them out to the community so we give them enough time to come to these meetings. Um, and then Stephanie, the quarterly update on the expense report, probably the next meeting or the meeting after. Yeah, um, can I address this? Because, um, so this is not a good year for me to be putting together an expense report because I am just getting um, uh, included in the sort of whole budgetary process. So I feel like I'm being asked to sort of report out on something while I'm trying to learn something and to get information together and to move some projects ahead. So, and I don't think, I mean, I know what you're looking for is to know where sustain sustainability dollars are spent. So there's the sustainability account right? That's the funding that I'm sort of working with. But there are other initiatives that sort of pertain to sustainability that don't neatly fall right under that category. So I'm not sure what you're looking for, but I just really honestly feel like right now, I just, I, I'm just being honest, I can't take this on right now. Like to gather all that information, I'm still trying to just get forward what I'm trying to deal with. There's a budget hearing in, um, I think in March that I'll be presenting the sustainability budget there at that hearing. So I just want to, I just want to be clear. It's like, it's not that I don't ever want to do it. I just like right now, it, it's just, um, it's not very straightforward. And I'm still trying to get a handle on the funds that I even have right now left over from um, other accounts. So um, I'm just trying to get a handle on all of the sustainability funding. So I will be more able to do that, I think, you know, by, I don't know, you know, maybe in June, possibly, like at the end of the fiscal year, it might be more possible for me, but I'm not going to be able to do that now. Okay. Is this something that you will possibly bring Sean in as well? To yeah. Um, yeah, I can talk to Sean too, but I just think like right now, you know, this just doesn't seem like a good 
timing for us to be giving you this when we're trying to put forth the budgets and we're doing all kinds of work on that. I mean, unless it's something that you are specifically thinking you want to request funds for, but I think um, community requests have already been made. So, um, um, can, can can I I just say we hopefully could be helpful in your preparing the sustainability report. Um, so is that something that as I, you're preparing for it, we could have input? No, I mean, I've already, it's not, I've already, I've already put together a proposal for 24. I think what you're asking me is for where funds have been spent. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can be helpful to me in that right now. So it's only been, we've only had about a, you know, a year or two of specifically allocated sustainability funds. And the first one's gone to the solar assessment. Um, that pretty much took up that, um, took up most of the funding for that first year, um, which we knew and I discussed. I gave you all, at one point I gave you an Excel spreadsheet for the 2023 of what my recommendations were for sustainability funding. And I gave it to you all a while ago. I honestly, it hasn't even been made clear to me that those items, that that's where the funding went. So again, I'm, it's a little bit, I'm just trying to get up to speed. Um, part of the problem is that those first couple of years, sustainability was sort of under the conservation. It's not part of conservation funds specifically. I mean, it's its own category, but it does fall under the conservation department. So we're trying to determine whether we wanna break it out as it's completely own department funding, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what we're working on. So I just, I, I just this, you know, I just want to be clear that, you know, I just don't know that I can do what you are wanting by the next meeting. Yeah. So Stephanie, when, when does the fiscal year end again? June thirtieth. June. Okay. So you're saying you'll be able to prep something after June? Yeah, or around June. You know, I mean. It'll be clear because if you're asking me for where funds have been spent, it'll probably be easier for me to get some of the expense reports, you know, the, you know, um, the, the accounting mm -hmm. logs and data. It'll be easier for me to get that information so that I can account for a fiscal year because that's how we keep track of our funds yeah. are by the fiscal year, not the calendar year. Sure. So it's a little easier for me to do it that way. Yeah, I, I think maybe a postmortem report of the fiscal year gone by and then what is the anticipated spend in what projects for the upcoming fiscal year? Would that be something that you can present, Stephanie? Um, yeah, later, you know, after the fiscal yeah. year ends. So, you know, I mean, please don't expect it July 1st because I have to, accounting has to get all their information, process everything. And that doesn't happen, you know, right away, like, in the first week of July, they're working on it in June, but sometimes there's things that don't get processed um, as long as the work happened in June or happened in the previous fiscal year, it may not get processed till like mid July. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I will, I'm just, again, I'm trying to sort of get used to all of this myself and navigate it as well. Um, and also to try to get clarity about how are we, how are we handling these funds? Are they gonna stay separate from conservation, are we going to have this sort of broken out? And we just, I, I haven't gotten a clear answer for that yet. So do you want me to add last week of July, first week of August? I would say first week of August would be a more realistic timeline. I think that would be good timing. Okay. I only ask because we also, in August, we need to start thinking about goals for the town manager for FY25. I know mm -hmm. it was a little delayed this year and we were rushing and we were making changes and there was a lot of back and forth. So, you know, Anna's recommendation was also to start the process early. So I think that will tie in well with understanding where we're going to spend money and also make updates to, well, look at our carbon address the goals for the town manager. Does that work for everybody else? Does that make sense? Oh, Laura. Yeah, I would just maybe reiterate the point I made last week 
time, which is that I think we need to make sure we have a clear sense of how we want to use this data. So we make sure whatever time Stephanie does spend on it, it's getting us what we need to use it in whatever way we are planning on using it. So I think we need to have that conversation as ECAC as well before Stephanie starts doing this. Yeah, Laura, I think one was around a little bit more transparency around where the funds are going. So I don't know if we'll be using the data at this point to do something. I think it's an understanding of where the money is going. And also to think about, okay, here's the plan for the next fiscal year. We need to align our town manager goals because we're making recommendations for what the goals are for the town manager. And based on that budget, I think it'll help us understand what those goals need to be. Uh, okay. I mean, but we're making recommendations to the town council. The town council sets the town Correct. management goals. Correct. Yep. And those goals are on a calendar year basis. Yes. Okay. We just might want to think through that a little bit more. Um, because I'm a little confused, but. Stephanie, I'm, I'm taking notes again. Stephanie. Um, yeah, I, I really, um, I really appreciate that. Um, well, you know, I feel like, well, Laura, you're often the, a voice of reason that I appreciate because I do feel like, you know, I, I want to provide what you want and would like, but I, um, I also, I, sometimes I find this a challenge because I'm also trying to do implementation and there are so many projects that we're trying to move forward right now. And these things take time. And so if they're constantly pulling me away from doing the work, that is the things that we wanted, right? You wanted these things in the previous year. So now we have to implement them this year. And so I just, am, sometimes it's just a matter of like struggling to sort of fulfill all the requests that everybody has you know I, i'm still one person i'm trying to do a lot and i think we are doing a lot and i know this is why things you know do have a tendency to move slowly um and it's not just me i find that everything in the town moves rather slowly um so i'm you know again I, i'm not trying to shirk from this or hide anything i just am trying to make sure that it's going to be useful and that I'm not spinning my wheels when I have such a huge list. And, you know, um, what I could do, I think, is because I made a proposal for a budget for FY24. So I've put that forward. That's what is going to be reviewed in the budget hearings. I am i don't see why I couldn't share that. I don't know, like at some point, the town manager has to look at things and approve them first. So I think that's what happened last time. I had to wait until he had at least reviewed it and approved them as requests. Um, so I can find out if I can share what I put forth for FY24. I did, as I said, in one of your packets, and I can send it again, I did share the FY23. So I can share the FY24. And as I mentioned to you at the last meeting, I did put in for an energy officer position and for administrative support. Yeah, that's great to hear, Stephanie. Um, I can change this, Stephanie, to an annual request. I think that would be more reasonable, to be honest, because I think it's part of, you know, you, you know, there's, there's an ECAC report that happens and it might be good to sort of maybe time those somewhat together. I know that happens in, I think, December, but I mean, we can figure out the timing that works best, but I just, I'm trying to still get this process under my belt. So that would I'll, be helpful. I'll just say my, um, I would like to get a mid-year report. Um, the fact that you aren't clear right now on what's been spent in fiscal year 23 um, is concerning. Well, and it's I'm, I'm clear on sustainability. What I'm not clear is 
was there a building project or a vehicle purchase that I'm not aware of? You know, those are the things, if you're asking me for sustainability related projects, that goes beyond my funding. Oh, well, what if it's just about the sustainability fund? Well, that's what I'm working on. And as I told you, like the first year's funding all went to the solar assessment or pretty much, um, or most of it did. Um, you know, I can I can certainly give you some of I can give you the sustainability funding, like the funds that were specifically identified. I can get that, but again, it would help me to to be able to sort of get the accounting um, and to do I, it on I an annual you. basis. I, I hear you. I'm just saying going forward, um, rather than just annual. I think a a midstream check to see if things have been spent and are in process. Um, or, or if there's some, you know, hold up somewhere, not because of anything you've done. Yeah, I, I, I lean towards that too, Andra, only because, I mean, if there's no funds available, why should we be, look? I mean, spending time on pace, for example, if we don't have funds, should, can we be focused on something else where funding is available? Should we switch to a different program and channel our efforts towards one theme because otherwise everybody's going to be working on so many different things. So I'm hoping understanding the finances will help us at least give us some direction. Uh, that was the intent, Laura. Um, Stephanie, I don't know if your what your thoughts are on half yearly instead of annual, if that's too much, or maybe this can evolve. What are your thoughts? Well, I would like to at least make this first report in August and okay. go from there. And I can look back to the sustainability funding that's been spent to date. Um, and I, I always report out on what we're working on. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure, um, you know, and again, like I said, I can show you what were proposed. The proposals that I've made so far are a reflection of the CARP and our meetings mm -hmm. and what the committee has expressed as its interest. So for instance, the like I said, the FY24 is requesting a position. Um, that's at least half of the funding for a position um, for an energy officer and an admin support. I think that's a good chunk of funding, a big chunk of funding. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest is identified for things that the committee has been interested in pursuing. Um, some of the money has been requested for community gardens. Um, you know, to continue with development of community gardens for food access. So it's there. I have it now. Okay. You know, I just want to make sure I can share it, but I don't see why I couldn't if it's going to be reviewed in the meeting. But, you know, the meeting's not happening till the hearing's not happening until March. So okay. I might just have to wait till then. But I'm happy. Like if I, if someone says, yeah, of course you can share this, then as soon as I can, I will. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, um, on to the next open actions here. Uh, Stephanie and Don, this was to connect with mass development. Um, yep, I, I still, um, I personally haven't done that yet because Don and I had a meeting and I think we were gonna try to find out what dates the chamber might potentially have yeah. um, breakfasts, so I haven't reached out to Mass Development yet because I'm not sure of what potential dates are available. Yeah, so that's the next and, action item here, Don. Um, well, and and I reached out to Claudia, um, and she said she'd get back to me, and then I reminded her on Monday and got an email saying she's away this week. Um, okay. So I presume I'll hear from her when she gets back next. And what we're trying to put together is some sort of an event that um, both mass development uh, would come um, and we would make some sort of presentation uh, to the group um, that the chamber was able to gather. So that is in the works and I have in fact reached out to Claudia, so. Okay, thanks Tom. And then Pace Flyer, we're talking about that today. Yeah, I mean, I can right. do that now. I, yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll talk about it um, as part of our agenda. Uh, festival planning, we have that as part of the agenda as well. Stretch code we discussed today. And then I 
added a new action item for myself for to review the FY24 Town Manager books. Um, okay, anything else? Action items? Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next part of the agenda and uh, vote on our minutes from the last meeting. I have a um, correction. I was present for part of the meeting. <laughs> Don't know how much I have to be present present for to be marked as present. But... I can watch the um, video, I think, and just mark it when you showed up and put the time on the attendance list, if that would help. You were in California, driving on, Cal and on California One, and you attended the meeting? I was, um, I was on the phone, yeah. Um, okay. I forget. I think I was at the airport. I forget where it was, yeah. <laughs> I move to accept the minutes with the note that Andra was mostly there and not worry about the time she arrived and say if Stephanie one thing to do. Does anyone second? Yeah, I'll second that. Oh, sorry. We got you, Don. You're muted. I'm happy to second it. Okay, and in no particular order, uh, by voice, voice vote, um, Roof? Yes. Allison? Yes. Selman? Yes. Raghavan? Yes. Bregger? Yes. Drucker? Yes. Rose? Yes. Goldner? Yes. D? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. All right, let's open it up to the public for comments. Okay, if anyone from the public is interested in making a comment or asking a question of the ECAC, please electronically raise your hand. I don't see anyone raising okay. their hands. All right, so before we move on to the stretch code, Laura, are you still planning on leaving at 5.30? Yes, I'm hoping to be able to stay online, but I'll be in transit, so probably won't be able to-, to Okay, do you, you want to jump in and you add an agenda item? Yeah, thanks to Sue. Um, so last week, I think, um, Kathy Schoen reached out to me um, wondering if just about the school vote that's coming up in in May, I believe, um, and wanted to know whether ECAC wanted to have any involvement in um, communicating out about the net zero attributes of the building. Um, and then I know Jesse and I got approached by Rudy Perkins at the Climate Justice event, Alliance event Saturday with a similar question. Um, so I suggested to Kathy that maybe she come to our next meeting and present a little bit about informationally about the school and the net zero attributes. Um, and then we can decide as an as a um, committee if we want to write a little memo of some sort just explaining how we you know we we of course as a committee can't provide input on how folks should vote on this but I think what we can provide is input on how this building will help us move towards meeting our goals um, by taking two buildings that are running on fossil fuels and turning them into one building that does not <laughs> Um, so just wanted to flag that for folks and see if anybody has any other thoughts. Otherwise, maybe I'll just connect with Stephanie and Vasu and Kathy and, um, get her on the agenda. Yeah, I yeah, I, I mean, offhand, that sounds like a, <clears throat> a good idea. I guess I would to your, um, 
point that I was going to make as well, Laura, but you you just made it, but uh, that it's not really so much about um, this building itself being net zero, because uh, I believe by policy, it needs to be net zero anyhow, um, but um, it's what we're taking offline. Um, and so if we had some data, and maybe it's in the greenhouse gas inventory about the um, was a Crocker farm and, and, uh, and Fort river that would, uh, Fort river school. Yeah. Um, I think those are the two, um, wild, wild well, and, and wildwood, right, right. All three, uh, elementary oh. schools. Oh, it's, it's just wildwood and Fort river. Yeah. Wild river. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is. If we, if we had some data, uh, in terms of the greenhouse gas, say, uh, the, the greenhouse gases that would be coming offline would be helpful. Yeah, that's a good point. Andra? Um, thanks for bringing it up. I was also going to bring it up, hoping that we might make some kind of communication. Um, I see ECAC as a potential um, uniting force, um, and it would, you know, be a great thing for us to um, call for unity and forward looking to our clean energy future as as a committee yeah and and i think maybe i wonder if there's some potential here to include that as part of the sustainability festival to say hey this is the benefits and this is what's going offline is that some data that we want to add and present to the community yeah, so we can certainly talk. I mean, there's a whole group of folks vote yes for Amherst schools or whatever who have started meeting to talk about different ways to get the message out about the school. And I believe planning on participating in the sustainability festival, but that doesn't mean that we can't also or support them in some way. So yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, let's add that to the agenda. Laura. If that group wants a table at the festival, Laura, they can. Somebody can just let me know if okay. they want their own table as well as you having a table. They can have a presence. Okay, and, great. You know, we support both all viewpoints. <laughs> so, if another group has a would like a table, they would have to be allowed to have one too. But just saying that there's an opportunity there. Great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Laura. Jesse, over to you. Okay. How much time do I have? Five minutes? <laughs> we have more than that. <laughs> All right. Go for it. Two, two minutes? OK. Um, so Stephanie and I had a, a really great meeting with uh, Dave Wiskavitz and Rob Morris, uh, who are the, the lead building inspector and the building commissioner, respectively. Um, it's a pretty sophisticated building department that has online permitting. Um, and they are very much aware of the changes that are coming. So the stretch code had that have come, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if there was no, nothing going on, if everyone just said, let's, uh, well, let me back up a second. So. What's on the table here, or what the discussion is, is right now we're a green community town. That means we abide by the stretch code. And every time the stretch code increases or changes, we automatically are the, for, you know, the energy related aspects of the building code automatically go up um, with those changes. Every town has the option to uh, vote in uh, what's called a specialized code, which essentially um, is kind of close to or akin to a kind of a net zero ish code. Um, and if, if, if there was, let's imagine a world where everyone in the town thought it was a good idea, the process would essentially be you write a, I believe you write a warrant article and then there is a bylaw vote, which would be, I think the town council would, you know, so a bylaw is written, the town council votes it in. And then probably 12 months from that time, it would be enacted. So by that math, the earliest this would 
happen would be uh, say January 24th, maybe could be. And, and the advice is always do it at either January, not January 24th, January, January 2024, do it on January 1st or July 1st. That's the, that's when all of these changes happen in the building code and really helps and makes sense to keep that schedule. So the other thing that's happening is all of, so as of January this year, the residential code has bumped up a little bit with the stretch code that it's gotten better. The, and the commercial code that will happen in July. Both of those codes will also bump up again in a year from July, so July 2024. So that's the context. Um, the question, I think, is how quickly could would this town want to push, if at all, for the specialized code? I'm not making the assumption. It's possible we, the town would not want to uh, add the specialized code, but if it did, how quickly would that happen? So a couple of pieces of information to further contextualize that conversation. One is um, <coughs> for new construction where this has the biggest impact, um, there's about somewhere between eight and 10 new houses in Amherst per year. Um, so this is so this is some feedback I got, specific feedback I think about the challenges that I'm hearing from um, the building department. So one is that um, cost of electricity um, and making some of these all electrification that is included in some of this um, code language is increasing the cost of living as well as potential capital costs. Um, there's been performance issues in town in that um, and resilience issues in that when you're all electric, you lose the grid. You have a clarifying or comment, Laura, you wanna say something? Yeah, I don't understand how that's possible. The electricity is still not more expensive. I mean, the only thing cheaper than electric, clearly cheaper is gas and gas hookups aren't even allowed in Amherst. So I don't see how electric makes things any more expensive than they already are, even with the recently increased costs of electric. And I think they're, yeah, they're, they're just even, talking about um, people who are trying to change their houses over. Oh, I thought you're talking about new construction. That, it, thank you for the clarification. It, I'm kind of piecemeal, like summarizing some of the comments that I got. Um, all told, I think there's a little bit of a nervousness around the technology because of the cost to operate, the cost to install and the resilience. That's, that's, a, public, that's a public conversation. That's, that's the input that they're hearing. Yeah, like. But the building code and the stretch code, isn't that just new? I mean, isn't there a separate code for renovations? The specialized code mm -hmm. and the stretch code I thought were for new construction. No, the, all, the building code, is oversees all construction. Yeah, so it's large additions or renovations and new construction. Well, the building code covers all construction. The, how much the, what the energy regs that kick in happen at larger project scales for renovation. I think, Laurie, if the point is that that this is a, a red herring and, and to say that we shouldn't talk about issues with the technology when it's simply required, it, that's, that's not a bad point. I think it's a good point. It, it's, it's just something they've been hearing. It's just a report back that they've been hearing from contractors and homeowners about some of these technologies. I mean, overall, the big, my, at the end of this list of some of this feedback is they're really excited to sort of learn more about and be able to articulate and understand like the benefits to the to builders and homeowners. They're that's not what they're hearing right now from everyone. Some people, you know, so I think it just for us to know that's part of the conversation that's happening out there. Um, what 
Stephanie. No, that's okay. Sorry. Jesse, go ahead. Um, I'll I'll wait. So what's making these processes work well is early planning, and that's actually tends to be what makes any process work well. So kind of getting this information early to people that are developing any type of project, renovation, new construction, commercial, residential, whatever it is, having them aware of the requirements early in the process is helpful, not just the requirements, but the incentives and the opportunities. And then one of the other challenges that they are seeing, and we're actually seeing quite a bit of this as well, um, is the the need the need to do electrical service upgrades as part of um, even a renovation? You know, so if someone does a, a changeover and a major renovation, or it just we're seeing four hundred amp, six hundred amp, two hundred amp. We're seeing huge electrical services um, going in. So it's it's the whole the it's not without its challenges. Is I think the point. Um, and because of that, and because of the relatively um, small amount of new construction, which is where, and major renovation, which is where the bulk of this would apply, their kind of initial proposal was to, sh to target January, 2025 as, as a, which would mean we get through the codes, you know, we get through the changes that came now and this summer, We'd have those for a year. The whole Jan July 24, there's more um, uh, stringent requirements that automatically happen in Amherst and take a year with that and be ready sort of at that same pace, have the specialized code kick in in January 25. Now, this is not what I'm proposing. I'm sort of just trying to report back the the highlights of the conversation. Um, I do think it's a reasonable proposal. Um, the pace of it, it could be even be kind of an exciting thing in the sense of like enacting this um, legislation, if you will, in concert with our 2025 um, goals. I know it obviously it, the sooner you enact these things, one would think the less energy would be used. Um, anyway, that's, so that's the big picture. That's most what I have to report back. And so maybe now if there's more questions, um, I can do my best to answer them. Uh, Stephanie, and then Don. So I, um, Jesse actually covered what I was gonna say, which was just that they were looking at sort of the incremental changes happening over the next year or so and the 2025 adoption. So Jesse covered it. Tom? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief. I, I just want to make sure I understand the timing, Jesse. I mean, I, under, I absolutely understand the timing of how long it takes to actually have a, a, a bylaw change take effect. Um, and I completely agree with you that it's about, it is about a year um, from the time the, the council would vote to do that, which says to me, and assuming, I mean, I presume by January 25, you're talking about it being enacted and effective January. Yes, 20. that's right. So there's not that much of a lag between now and then for the ducks to get in a row, the presentation to be made or thought to be made to town council, the vote from town council, uh, you know, all would need to be accomplished, um, you know, by the end of this year to give you uh, a, a year, you know, for the, the state to do what the state has to do and what everybody has to do to actually have it become effective. So it doesn't that, it doesn't sound like that, they're pushing stuff back. It sounds like it's a realistic timeline. That's my take on it. Um, a, a year to pass it, a year to enact it is the so so. This is, is the screenshot from the Zoom call that was 
presented. This is a timeline. Yep. And I mean, Jesse talked about the adaption process. So yeah, it's six months to 12 months is the recommendation. I mean, I think it's, it's also, the, we could take a different approach of let's just do this as quick as we can. Why would we do, and I see some nodding, yeah. at, you know, where is this coming from? This six to 12, this, this six, where is this timeline coming from? I don't understand. So that's DOERs. Yeah. And also, okay, it's, also know, it's also it's historic of, Amherst. What, what I'm hearing from everyone at the town is that is a typical amount of time in this town. Okay. Amherst aside, the requirement is that there be six months. There, that BBRS regulations require a six month concurrency period between adoption and implementation. In order, okay, so it only requires six months and Brookline has already adopted and a lot of other larger cities now have already adopted the new specialized stretch code on a six month timetable. Northampton is as well. Yeah, so why can't we do that? We're a tiny little town, it should be easy. We have very few buildings going up. Anyway, I'll-, I'll... Yes, yes. Uh, Steve and then Andre. Yeah, thanks. Um, I was trying to look through the resources that I that you shared that I looked at um, for the difference between, I guess it's the stretch code that we already have versus the specialized code that the town could consider adopting. Do you have a chart or a document that sort of shows us what those additional energy efficiency features would be required under the specialized code as compared to the existing code? I can tell you okay. um, in, if, if there are, yeah, there are plenty of charts. Um, let's see. Yeah, I took some screenshots as well from the meeting. I mean, it, it's in the, it's, it's in the presentation. I mean, that, that is, it's in the presentation if you saw it and it's in the PowerPoint that goes with it. So we sent it, it sent it out. Um, okay. I'm looking at that now. Um, I mean, it's essentially the difference. I mean, one way to put it would be like, it's the difference. It'll be end up being, say, the difference between uh, like a HERS 45 and a HERS zero. It, yeah, I, yeah, that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I kind of understand it, but it didn't really tell me too much. I guess you know, it would be great to know what the greenhouse gas reductions would be by adopting the specialized code uh, beyond the existing stretch code. Oh, that's an interesting question. That, that's probably that more. Really, that, that depends on. So hers, hers zero is net zero. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So going from hers 40, which is what, a little bit better than average? to net zero? Yeah, so this is the, Steve, this is the timeline stretch code, first 52 to 58, um, going to first 42 to 45 yeah. okay. and 24. The specialized code ah. is first 45, well, there's different categories. All electric is 45, mixed fuel is 42, and then zero energy. Yeah, so there's three different ways to yeah. to do it. Um, yeah, so the one is so if it's an all electric house, you're allowed a hers forty five, or um, if it's mixed fuel, which would include fossil fuels, that basically means um, you have to bring it down another three and have solar and be wired to transition to all electric. Um, or or just simply a hers zero, which they say they call a hers forty two plus solar. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and I think it's all also about being EV ready. Um, I think it includes that as well as part of the specialized code, I, Jesse. I think that's I, happening. I think I think that's just going to be automatic. Yeah. That's already automatic. I think by by next summer. Okay, um, 
I guess what I'm thinking, you know, the what you heard from the town was sort of the, the cost and the challenges of moving to the specialized code. What I'm interested in knowing more about is sort of what's the bang or the benefit of doing so, so we can kind of do that cost benefit um, balancing. Yeah, interesting proposal. And, and I would say, Steve, I might even call it the perceived cost. Yes, thank you, that's good. Versus, and to be fair, versus a perceived benefit. Andra? Yeah. Um, so the loud voices at first are always going to be, you know, reactive to change. Um, we can certainly make a strong and and pound wide pitch for you know why we're going to move forward quickly um i wouldn't want to start with the assumption that we should go um slowly uh, i i think we should start with the assumption that we should go as quickly as we can and um find out the uh advantages in particular um if we're going to try to include the saved admissions, you know, <laughs> okay, it's only 10 homes on average um, per year. Is that what they, they said? Yeah, eight to 10, but it could, it would include, I mean, a, both the stretch code and the specialized code now would now include much better regs for renovations, large renovations. Yeah, it's great. But, but, but also um, it includes every building. <laughs> it, it includes commercial buildings. So um, it could make a large difference depending on what's cooking that we don't know about um, that, that could be um, proposed in the next year while we're going slow. So um, how much are we gonna count on this? to uh, reduce our emissions, our, our potential emissions, should we not do it sooner? Um, how much is it gonna raise our emissions to, to delay for a year? That some data that we could get estimates on. That, that's, that would be really tricky. I mean, we could do a, a back of the envelope, but that's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty yeah it could also but, i mean like honestly if the code is so stringent that it causes people to build less that's the way it would make have a change right. in emissions. well well we're we're they go somewhere else we're we're assuming that they you know if they want to build in amherst they can't build somewhere else it's yeah. it's going to happen so um let's grab it i also don't think it's that i mean again i'm not i can't i can't from what i've heard it doesn't seem reasonable in this town that it would be that it could happen before january 24 as far as being enacted it um, can't happen before january 24 because we've already missed the six yeah. month deadline yeah. for 24 so that is the earliest we would have so to. So that's adopt, the earliest. So we'd have to adopt um, the specialized stretch code. This is not the kind of thing that takes a lot of back and forth writing. This is like a totally it's all, standard. It's already written. It's, it's already written. written. Well, so, you, you so just this is wrote. Where, yeah. And, and I want to hear what Duane has to say, but where I'm kind of head, where I've been headed with this is whenever it happens there's no reason not to be ready as soon as possible. And so sort of picking a, if we wanna be ready, if we wanna give ourselves the deadline or we, this isn't something we do or we could help push it along, but the idea would be um, to have this, to ask the council to have this ready by June means 
the town can still choose. Um, then, then the town can choose January 24, 20, January 24, July 24, or January 25. Um, and I want to caution us. I agree. You can go fast. It's written, et cetera, et cetera. I've watched a lot of people, a lot of groups, a lot of things in this town try to go fast and end up not even happening because they didn't take the steps. They didn't sort of play the field. You know, I just, I'm, I'm, my pitch is not, it's, it's about being cautious and not pushing too hard in such a way that would make it take longer. Um, maybe that's naive. That's just what I keep seeing over and over. Sorry, Dwayne. Yep, I was just gonna, um, I agree with everything <laughs> in terms of um, let's move this as fast as we can, but be um, cognizant and, and sensitive to um, how long things generally take and not to um, push people's buttons by trying to push it too hard. and hope for um, as early as possible, but be prepared for January 25. Uh, that being said, I do wonder whether there's a play to be had with regard to um, setting up and it, whether this may take an act of the town council, I don't know, uh, but some um, um, early adoption um, incentives uh, for, uh, you know, maybe a few of those builders, new, new builders or, or renovators that could be incentivized I'm not exactly sure what that would take, uh, but ex expedited permitting or something like that, um, that uh, could be um, incentivized to be an early adopter and, and take on the this um, um, special code. What did you call it again? Ex extra stretch code. Specialized. <laughs> Specialized uh, code, um, even though it's not um, enacted yet, uh, but it's it's available for people to work from and to utilize. And maybe there's uh, an advantage also of, of testing it out a bit, having some some experience with it, if we could uh, uh, maybe make recommendations about um, incentivizing early adopters. Yeah, well, one thing I will say is the opting into the specialized stretch code was a proposal that we made that we include that into the town manager's goals for the year. Uh, once we look at it, next week at the next meeting, we'll know whether the town council is aligned. And that could also help with the timeline, Jesse, because that is part of the town manager's goals. If the town council wants to do it tomorrow, yeah. cool, great. Yeah. Uh, Andra? Um, oh, uh, so, uh, we already have early adopters. We already have um, lots of um, net zero buildings in town. Um, we don't have to um, ask for people to to try it. Um, and incentives for early adopters, that would be a lot of work <laughs> to get that into our um, bylaws um you know or whatever the the zoning it, it, that would be huge it, it's way easier for us to just take on the specialized stretch code um so and the fact that they haven't been able to put in gas for the last eight years or something um means we have already been an experiment in um the specialized stretch code there's nothing new in it that isn't already being used all over the place, including in Amherst. So I would not go down the incentives route. Yeah, that's the, I don't think that's possible either. And just to so, be clear, it's not, the specialized code doesn't mean these are net zero buildings. They're, they're some of them are net zero capable but they can still have some amount of fossil fuels if, if it was allowed. And there's plenty of sites that have no sun. So it's just not, it's not a thing. So, but it's, it's good. It, it's, these are low energy buildings. These are much lower energy buildings than, than last year's code. So, so why don't we do this for the sake of time here? 
if the town manager's goals include stretch, specialized stretch code, I mean, there's a moot point. We don't even need to have a discussion. It's, no, we do. We, we, need a, we need a move. I, want, I would like to move that we recommend to town council that they adopt the specialized stretch code. That we send the recommendation. At, before, at, no? before June. As soon as possible, because that way it'll go into effect in January 1. January and we decided the earliest it's going to go into effect is January 1. So as soon as possible means January 1. Yeah. Steve? The, is, the, is the specialized code brand new or have other communities already adopted it? It's been adopted. It's been adopted by Northampton, by Brookline, by a bunch of other communities. It is fairly new as of January 1, I believe. And uh, it was a much improved specialized code. But there was a stretch code in there that we had opted into, right? We adopted into the old one. We just have to opt into the new one. We did, the, we did this previously. Um, if I could, actually. Yeah. So we voted to be a stretch code community. When the stretch code is updated, which it is, because we've already adopted the stretch code that automatically happens the specialized code is an additional code it's not right. a specialized stretch code it's a specialized code okay, sorry. so and it's very well i'm just trying to like make the language clear because it's so super confusing yeah. so just to be clear that we already have adopted the stretch code we already are that's what jesse was alluding to when he said there's going to be changes that are going to be made and then there's going to be additional changes that will be made over the next course those are automatically happening because we're a stretch code community. The specialized code is like this above and beyond. And that's the piece we're talking about. So we've already we've already done this process once before with the special with the stretch code. Now we're doing it with the specialized code. The, so and it's the a stretch vote code by the, will yes. automatically it'll the stretch automatically codes, yeah. improve the all projects sort of every year, it seems like now. But certainly July 24. All residential and commercial projects are going to be kind of somewhere between this current stretch and the proposed specialized. It's so again, not, they're like, not that different. Yeah. And so it's again, where like every to... town is going. Right. It's where, right. it's where everything is going. Yeah. So more... again, I'd like to move that we recommend this if there's anyone interested to second or have a vote. I'll leave it at that. Uh, Laura? Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, um, I would second that. Did you hear me? Yeah, and I've said. Okay. <laughs> Stephanie, you had your hand raised. Uh, I, I did, but never mind. It doesn't. It's it's been covered. Um, okay, so we have a motion on the on the floor um, to recommend that the town council adopt the specialized code. By Goldner. It's been seconded by Drocker. So now we have a vote. So by voice vote in no special order. Roof? Yes. Goldner. You're muted, Lori. Yes. Sorry. Allison. Yes. Selman. Yes. But provided, is it too late to say that it, it, it shouldn't just say we're recommending that you adopt it, but we're recommending that you adopt it at at the it's yeah. it's the, the timing is going to yeah the the timing is going to be what the timing is if they move yeah. to do that now it has to well, it'll enact it immediately you know, is it, 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 we're recommending immediately yeah january 2024 okay. we're recommending that they take whatever yes. action is necessary such that they can hit the earliest possible date. That's, I think it's, yes. Yeah. Well, that's what, I think, what, I think, I think that's what Lori meant. So I wanted to clarify. I know, but I think that's like the, there is certainly the, there, there's this timing process. So if they vote, if they vote, the timing is the timing, right? Okay. They, they will have to try to hit January of 24. We can't control the timing, but we can, we can recommend that they do this as soon as possible. And sorry to flog the horse. We, we can't control their timing, but if they see a recommendation from us that includes some right. specificity around timing, okay. we can, that will might result in better timing. Okay, I'd be happy with amending it uh, so that it can be adopted <laughs> by January 1 of 2024. Okay, hold on. I'm just writing this down so I've got it okay. 
can I change adopted to effective January 2024? Lawyer speak. Yes. <laughs> But January ask. 124. Okay. Is Laura okay with that? Because she's second. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. Um, so, well, we have an amendment. So we sort of start again. Um, so the original motion was you move to accept the specialized code as soon as possible. Um, Selman's amendment so that it can be, so that the code can be effective by January 124. So now I need a second. I'll oh, second. Who, so Allison, second. I'm going to say oh. okay. it. Everybody wants to second. Okay, sure. I'm sorry. I heard Don first, so I'm sorry. I'm going to go with that. Okay. All right. So now we have a vote again. So, so Roof? Yes. Allison? Yes. Thelman? Yes. Raghavan? Yes. Breger? Yes. Rose? Yes. Goldner? Yes. D? Yes. Drucker. Yes. Excellent. Okay. okay. So yes. moved. So Thank you. Vasu, I would assume you'll want to write something up, write the recommendation to yep. provide to the council president. So as a follow-up, I think maybe what I could try to do is put together a little packet because I think that because it's it, in the idea that it, there would be pushback or whatever it may be or challenges expressed. I wonder if I could, maybe I can try to pull from some of these uh, documents and just a little kind of cheat sheet on, on the whole topic for, so we all have that. Um, at our fingertips. Yeah, and I'm, Jesse, I'm pretty sure it made it to the town manager's call, so I don't see it as a pushback that we'll be receiving from the town council. But yeah, thank you. Andra? So I was going to suggest that we get that to the council with the recommendation. Yeah, so Jesse, send it over to me when you get a chance, please. And Vasu, please make sure that you copy me on anything you send to the council. Yeah, hold it. And and um, actually, so I, I'm going to change that. You should actually be sending it to the town manager. You make a recommendation that you recommend that the council do this, but you send it to the town manager, not to the council president. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay. Good discussion. Um, next topic is on CPACE. Yeah, so um, rather late, um, Stephanie sent you all around a revised fly uh, flyer. I incorporated a lot of what Lori suggested and put some red and, you know, kind of flashing neon so uh, it might get people's attention. Um, I also consider really strongly what, what you said, Steve, um, and, you know, this flyer, I, I thought was supposed to be a flyer that's kind of available for anybody who kind of walks into um, the building department or on the second floor of town hall, um, you know, who's going to make some sort of an application, uh, you know, for a permit or, you know, for some sort of uh, uh, zoning approval for, for a project. Um, I think there'd be a separate and different packet of information that would be put together um, if Stephanie and I are successful at, um, at getting some sort of an educational event with the kind of developers, builders, property owners um, who we want to specifically target. And I, I think that would be fleshed out a little bit after we've really had some conversations with um mass development because I don't I don't want to just be saying yes you're going to get more favorable terms. I mean I, I want to make sure that you know the terms that uh the financing terms will in fact be more favorable. I mean it's 
it's easy to now say one of the more favorable things you'll get is it's going to be an assessment on the property the payback will be so so that if you sell the property there, there's an assessment on it that pays off the the financing over time um but there's but there's more information that we would need to get from mass development in order to put together a a, a focused flyer not flyer a focused educational packet of information for um for developers and, and that's that would be developed in the context of this gathering this educational gathering if if you, you know if um the chamber is even still having um these breakfasts that they used to have I mean, I'm trying to get information from them. Do they still have events and and gatherings at which we could at, at which we could make our pitch? So that's that's where I am in that. But take a look at this flyer, which I which I understand is going to be available on the second floor, um, where all the other pieces of paper are hanging on the on the wall uh, as as you. Um, file whatever it is you're going to file your application. So that's that's where I am on that. Stephanie? Yeah, thanks, Don, for that summary, too. Um, you know, I think that any anything that we do produce is going to have to be reviewed by mass development, including this flyer. Like, we will definitely want to make sure that they take a look. Um, if you recall from the presentation from Carol Collins from Greenfield, um, I mean, she certainly helped kind of direct the local business to the program, but had very little to do with it once they signed on. They basically worked with mass development. Which is why, again, I think we want to be careful too about the information that we're sharing or whatever we come up with. It's you know we're going to want to work very very closely with them in sort of developing materials or getting the word out. Don, do we want to look at the memo that you have, Blair? I mean, you can look at it. <laughs> Stephanie sent it around to you. It's I'll share. Um, I'll screen share. Sure, I've got it up. I'm sorry, guys, I got to run downstairs for a minute and find the right adapter for this computer. <laughs> I'm going to run out of batteries. Of course. Stephanie, you said this goes to mass development. Um, probably. Yeah. yeah, they administer, they administer the program, Jesse. So but they, this, you, you're working with them to to, uh, I mean, it's possible. I'm not sure what the format is of the, like the delivery method. Is it when we say flyer? Is it is this a piece of paper? Is it a web? The, it, it would be. It'll probably be all of the above. That we would want to make some copies available on the second floor where contractors typically come um, for permits. Um, and where the inspectors are, we'd probably want to have it available on our website. Um, you know, I, and if we do, if we do kind of a targeted outreach, we'd probably even put it out on social media. You know, we we would do our typical communications pathway, which is all kind of um, outlets and options for um, cool communicating. But again, that's which is why it's important that we make sure that they're okay with this flyer as written. Yeah, so it's going to be the flyer. Don, you're 
hopefully at the chamber breakfast talk to the businesses about this. Um, yeah, there'd be a lot more detailed yeah. information, Vasu. Like, you know, how you know it's it's bonds that get that get issued. Um, you know, a lot of the detail of 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 how the financing works and how the financing would likely compare to, you know, conventional financing, you know, from a bank or or other financial institutions. Yeah, is this flyer selling a property owner to look into this option at all? Is there is that something that we want to highlight here? That there's some potential financial benefits doing this? Well, that's that, that's what we need to communicate with DE. I mean, right now, I mean, that's what we need to get an understanding from um mass development like how how does this financing mm. compare i mean the one thing we do know is that the financing carries with it if you will in legalese what i would call a security interest and the security interest is essentially an assessment a, a, that gets a, a collected like taxes get collected um you know from the owner of the property um, which is slightly different than what a normal financing could do. I mean, a bank can't do that, um, but but this financing can, and in, in in terms of you know mechanisms for repayment, security interests that transfer with the property, which a normal mortgage wouldn't necessarily you know wouldn't transfer um, when you sell the property. So there are advantages. And there are ease to it, but in terms of the terms, in terms of the interest rate you'll get, or um, you know how long, you know, the the term in years, I'm not 100% sure yet. And that really involves a communication with mass development because I don't think it's as simple as saying, yeah, you're going to get better financing. I I I'm I'm not 100% there yet on that. Hmm. So are we saying that this will be the final flyer that uh, you will have, or this is TBD after the conversation with uh, Mass Development Center? Well, it, as, as Stephanie says, it clearly has to be sent to Mass Development to, to see if, if it's there, it's accurate as far as they are concerned. Okay. Um, you know, so it's, it's not about to be posted on the second floor. And certainly there's time if any more of you have things you would want to add to it in some way, um, recognizing that this is a basic flyer and not a it's not targeted for, as a presentation or an educational presentation to a particular group. It's an introduction to um, to the program. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Jesse. I wonder if if if, it, if the mass development logo and the town of Amherst logo were at the top, and maybe a, a nice picture at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, it's a two pager. If it ended up as a two pager, I think those two things would make it evenly fill two pages. Maybe some people yep. carrying a piece of a heat pump on a brick building. Do we have that, that picture? Jesse, I think that formatting will come. I mean, we have to include their logo if we're putting this out there, and oh, we would great. have ours as well. I mean, those kind of just have to happen. So That's I think right I mean. now we're just looking for content. This isn't like the formatted flyer. It's just kind of the the content of the flyer. The formatting will come later. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. So Don, then the next step would be to connect with mass development, continue to work on and update the flyer, and then you'll let us know when it's posted. Well, yeah, there's two different things that are gonna go on as far as this pace is concerned. Thing one is 
to get some response from mass development to this flyer. Thing two is working on an educational um, event with the chamber and developers before which more detailed information would be developed to be able to present uh, e either from mass development or from us working with mass development to be presented at that event, whatever that event turns out to be. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks, Tom. Okay, any other questions for Don? Okay, Lori, over to you on uh, heat pumps. Yeah, so um, I honestly, I've been thinking mostly about the festival lately and not as much about heat pumps, but I know that um, uh, there is one thing I, uh, um, I wanted to ask about before getting into the festival, which is that uh, Stephanie, you sent around the heat pump advocacy training ad, I think it was. I did. Had the very large price tag at the bottom of $800 a head for four sessions, I think it was, um, which struck me as, as ouch. I, I can get for, for a little bit more than that. I can get trained as a, as a passive house consultant. <laughs> so why would I pay 800 to be a, just to, just to be an advocate for heat pumps? Um, so I, I'm a little puzzled about that and wondering what to do with it. Do you have any suggestions? No, I mean, so Steve had reached out and asked if um, there was a way that the town could provide some yeah. funding for training, but I think it would be limited. I mean, I suggested that potentially two to three members could be trained, but if you're going to get, so what I would say is if that happens, and I'm sort of envisioning the whole heat pump program, because I know, Laurie, you and I are right. working on developing the RFQ, so envisioning how that would work those members that get who want the training would have to be the ones committed to the heat pump program that right. would provide training to community members so there right. would be you know there would be a direct you know support of you know the programming that we're trying to implement here in town right. and i think there could be sustainability funds used so i would not i did not get a an affirmative i got a sure let's have a discussion <laughs> so that was the response i got so um about, about it's not a no we, okay about about that particular ad or about eventually trying to include this as part of the heat pump program no, no just about getting training uh, only okay, i'm only means. discussing the training okay yeah um, so this is this is for you know if if the town could potentially provide the funding for two to three members i i suggested two to three um who would attend the training and the town could provide the funding to attend those training sessions, yeah. then those members would then be required to work on doing the community outreach and training right. in creating the community captains. Right. Like, I feel like that's, you know, I was sort of thinking, you know, what we had talked about and how that sort of structure might work. So in sort of building that heat pump program out a little more, it would start with ECAC members training community captains. So I think that's a nice right. logical progression and it would pay it forward because those people then wouldn't have to pay for the training. Right. You know, you, you all would hopefully have been, you know, supported in doing that. Um, the other, you know, I, I don't, I think it makes sense for you all to be the ones to sort of get this training. Um, so that's what I'm advocating for. I had just haven't gotten a response yet. And we have to look at the sustainability funds and make sure. I think we do have funds to do that. So I just but, want to make sure that they're available and can be used now. But if we're going to include this in some way, I mean, we talked about including this in the heat pump program as the last step in that whole thing, right? Um, so maybe that's a better place for it. Maybe we get a better deal doing that as part of the larger program, right? I don't know what you mean by include that as part well, of the larger program. Having the having the consultant do that training having it having yeah wasn't wasn't the one of the uh requirements in the rfp wasn't it to provide some sort of training for um i forget what you called it it was the same thing essentially heat pump advocates that they train uh you know before they before they wrap up there as a final phase of their heat pump program whoever whichever consultant we hire provides training to 
uh, Amherst residents to carry on the advocacy part of his work. Yep, and so I'm not saying, I think this is what we'd have to, I think this is a conversation we should have offline because um, I feel like, yes, that was a sort of proposal, but I'm also seeing this as an opportunity where if we could just sort of get the training right up front now okay. and not have to wait and not have to rely on the consultant and to give them yet another thing, yep. I sort of feel like it, to me, it would probably be more ensure that we sort of have the information that we want to be right just dis right. distributed to the to the community and and to make sure that it's the correct information yeah. i feel like you have a very specific training i don't we're not guaranteed that the consultant is going to do this kind of same training and have the same information as you're getting through the Green, Green Energy Consumers yeah. Alliance, right? So, so we can we can talk more about it offline, but just for okay. everyone's benefit, I wanted to say that. All right. Yeah, that's the better recommendation too. I think Stephanie. Okay. Um, so I don't have anything else on heat pumps other than that. I do have. Um, it's the festival. The the, the last thing that um, the pace flyer was a good segue actually into talking about the festival. Because hey, hey, Lauren, a question on heat pumps. Uh, I thought you were also going to set up some sort of a panel discussion. Oh, yeah. Pumps, yeah. Right. Um, um, I'd still like to do that in principle. I'm a little, I'm wondering how to go about it. Maybe, maybe what I should do is put out feelers for folks to please send me suggestions for people who would sit on a panel to discuss heat pumps. Presumably we want someone who's done the transition in their own home and who also knows something about these systems, or maybe just someone who's done the transition somebody who you know, knows about installation, somebody who knows about um, uh, bigger picture items, you know, just a, a group of people that, that would make good panelists for a discussion on heat pumps for the public to come in and just ask the questions. Right. So if you have suggestions for that, if you wanna send them to me, I'll start reaching out and seeing what folks think. What do you think about for a time frame? maybe after the end of the, we're thinking early, I'm thinking, not this semester, <laughs> I'm getting slammed, but maybe maybe like May or June. For yeah. A, yeah. Yeah, we do have to put that out. Yeah. Look, Lori, I wanted to remind you, I'm in the middle of one of these transitions. So yeah, me too. A little, it's a little more complicated because it's a ground source heat pump. And oh, but oh, that's I, great. I am right in the middle of it. The wells are in. The trenching is going to happen in March and the installation is going to happen in March. Okay, so Ron, you're one of our panelists, Don. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, and, and as I was telling uh, Laura uh, uh, and I think Jesse, I'm also learning all sorts of stuff about mass save because, you know, I went online, you know, they said, OK, you're eligible for a maximum $25,000 heat loan, which is an interest free loan over seven years. So I made my application and they sent me back a piece of paper approving it for $50,000. And I said, but there's no $50,000. I don't, there's apparently an unadvertised extended heat loan program. And, and they sent me the check for $50,000 to um, <laughs> give to the contractor. It's very strange. Um, it's even more strange because you're also do rebates, right? And they usually subtract the rebates from that too. Yeah, they did. It was, it was approved for 65 and they subtracted ah. $15,000 rebates. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That was something that is not obvious from their website either. Right. <laughs> but they didn't, they didn't subtract the insulation they paid for to do the insulation in our attic. That was extra where they paid another $4,400 to put insulation in. So I know at least one person who would like to talk to you, Don, and I might send them to you anyway, but I think for a panel, this you'd make a really good panelist. And and Laura, you completed a, is Laura still here? She completed a heat, you completed the heat pump transition, right? Yeah, she did too. I think it was last year. I, I think Stella did. I did about five, six years ago. I'm about to more. do mine next week, but it won't be a complete conversion, I'm afraid to say, um, because of the cost problems that Jesse was talking about earlier. Um, so Stella did one, Laura did one, Stella did, um, and then who else? Sounds like I we did. had enough people <laughs> right on the committee to just 
do it. I mean, I, I've also overseen many. So I'm wondering, Lori, um, if I could just throw this out there. Um, because it's like so many of you have done it, um, why not just, you know, and Basu, you're the chair, but why not make this one of those evening presentations as part of a meeting and just each oh, of you sort of tell your story and it could be the entire meeting, you know, an hour of presentations, an hour of people that give, you know, ask questions. And, and we, we could just talk about the transition we've done and why and or what we're doing and then let and then open up the questions. That'd be a great idea. Yeah. I, I it wouldn't hurt, in my opinion, to ask an installer and and like a herds raider who, or someone who's someone who's one of these conduits for mass save to be on a panel. I think that those two entities would offer a different level of expertise and when it comes to these kind of questions picturing like if the questions get a little more car talky um and it'd be great to have those entities on the panel i could i can send you some ideas if this goes really well we should maybe do it if, if it goes let's do it here if it goes really well i'll see about getting a radio show right doing a broadcast one it maybe it could even be in the evening just broadcasting it out so people can call in. That'd be sort of cool. I don't know anything about that, but I have a friend who does this all the time. So I bet she would be willing to help out. Lori, I'm gonna send you, there's a blog right now that is, or a blog, no, not a blog, a podcast. That's the word I'm looking for. There's a podcast right now. That's basically what we're talking about with different special guests. You're gonna love it. Yes, sounds like I am. Lori, I just have to check out, you know, because it's a public meeting. I'm not sure how that all sort of oh, okay. work. So let's right. just, I mean, you've got. I could do that separately then outside of the, uh, okay, good. You might get a setup to do that though sometime. Okay, so it's going to be an internal panel discussion. Is that what we want? Uh, yeah, let's let's do that and maybe take Jesse's suggestion and ask um, maybe the guy who uh, so my the guy who's doing my transition it's it's Western Mass the same one that did Laura's I ended up going with you two that's um, doing mine too so yeah. the guy, they also did ours <laughs> so the guy who runs that yeah he, he well they're good they they talk to you <laughs> yeah. and they're willing to go back and forth and uh, I, the guy I've been talking to the salesman Lauren is not the guy who knows stuff I think Jesse you gave me someone gave me the name of the guy who runs the place who really knows what he's talking about I haven't spoken with him but Mark yeah I'll send you some I'll send you some information I yeah think he'd be I, think a great... you, I think you may have already well um, maybe I'll send a email to both of you and make make the ask a little we, let's talk offline. All right. Okay. We to, no, we're not. And then, and then a hers raider. We can do that later. Okay, we'll do it offline. Okay. All right. So who's on the panel? We got Don, Jesse, Lori. All of us. Laura, Stella. Stella. I haven't installed. Well, so I wasn't. I actually was not the adult in this household who was like in charge of that. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Okay. Was it that kid that keeps popping up? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Frederick, my uh, my spouse. So would he be willing? I'm to happy. Uh, unlikely because he has to play with Rosie. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So it'll be Don, Jesse, Laura, probably. Um, Dwayne. I mean, yeah, I'm happy to. I mean, I went through that. I, I mean, I'm not sure what you mean by conversion. I still do have a backup uh, oil heat uh, yeah. and a wood pellet stove. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we definitely have uh, did the transition. Yeah. And if you want to, guys want to hear something funny, my transition is scheduled for next week. And on that cold day we had two weeks, a week ago now, my old furnace decided to start short cycling and stopped warming the okay. house. So my backup stove <laughs> has come in really handy this last week and a half. <laughs> anyway. it, it sounds it like you've got plenty of people. Oops. Huh? I just say you got plenty of people. I, I have a recently installed heat pump water heater, which I've been collecting lots of data. I could talk forever on that if if you let me. That's right. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So I think what we should do is each of us should prepare five minutes of uh, you know our experience and then open it up. Cool. 
I might I might contact each of you separately just to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, this is Laura. Um, I'm going to have to drop off now, but yes, happy to participate. Okay, cool. Bye, Laura. And uh, when are we targeting, Laura? Uh, that could be that could be in a month. I don't know. Um, let me make sure my calendar isn't. But let's not do it next week, but maybe in. Yeah. Two, <laughs> Too soon. Yeah. Okay. Too soon. Would this would this be during one of our ECAC meeting timeframes? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Month is uh, March fifteen. That should be okay. March in there somewhere. <coughs> All right. If it's March fifteen, I won't be here. So that's okay if I'm not on the panel. I'm I'm going to be out of the country from the tenth to the twenty sixth. Oh, but Don, you're doing the the ground source though. Yeah. So let's try to schedule it when you can be here. Um, yeah, so I'm gone from the 10th to the 26th. Let's do April then, mid-April. Yep, that works fine. So two I'm months. gone from March 17 to 21st, April March. 21st. To March 17 to April 21st. So do we want to do it after? First, first meeting in May? Sure. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, and so now are we on to the uh, festival? Yep. Okay, so so my you know the I, I wrote to Vasu about this. I think that I, last time it was suggested we should keep it simple. So I'm thinking just uh, getting a couple of easels like we had last time. Jesse, I understand those came from you. The easels. I I have one rugged easel. Okay, so one, one floppy one. If we can get a second one that might give us a place for people just to write their what they're interested in, you know, just free, real freestyle, what they're interested in. And then on the other one, there could be similar to what was at the um, at the uh, uh, what was it, the street block party. Um, so I was thinking, you know, either a, a big easel or a big easel and a big piece of paper or something for people to, to write on to make a to make a um, mural sort of thing on just to you know fill in what they think is important and write write stuff um, sort of like a the online version of that what's it called the <laughs> with the, the post-it anyway. note thing post-it note thing right jam oh, board. that's a good idea post-it jam note board yeah jam board a jam board an actual jam board <laughs> there you go so um do we laura do we want to take the time to also collect any data that we might find useful? I don't know what it is, but I'm just throwing it out there. Instead of, you know, having the community write whatever they feel like, is there some metric that we want to collect that might be useful? Like if they're not aware of some topic, so we can channel our discussion in these meetings. Just wondering if that might. Well, oh, that's the sort of thing that I would put up. You know, I can I can prompt. We can prompt them at the beginning of at the Jamboard, right? What do you want to? Um, you know, for the jam board, we could have some prompts like uh, what should ECAC, you know, we'll explain who we are, uh, be concerned with, right? What are you concerned with, right? <laughs> Stephanie? It's also an opportunity to promote the heat pump program, which will hopefully be, if not happening, soon to be happening. Um, and one of the questions could just be, do you have heat pumps? It would be a great way to get some information about some of the households. Yeah, and the other thing that I want, the other side of this is to, we wanted to take information in and take stuff in. But we also, as Vasu keeps reminding us, want to get word out there that we're here and that we're doing stuff. So I was thinking of getting together a bunch of flyers. So we have the PACE flyer. We should put together a heat pump flyer, something about where you can get information for electric vehicles. Um, you know, I could think of a whole, some of these things are probably available through things like uh, Green Energy Consumers Alliance, but some of them are things we would make up specific to ECAC and specific to the town. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have ideas for that, send them, uh, let's see, what were the, the ideas I had already were, uh, where are they, they're here. Um, the PACE flyer, where to go to find out about electric vehicles, where to go to find out about heat pumps and decarbonizing your home, tips to green your home. Uh, climate legislation you might want to support, just a list of things that folks might, that are politically active, since there are a lot of us in Amherst that do that. It's my next meeting, <laughs> you know, might want to call their uh, state senators and, and uh, representatives to support certain um, legislation. Um, 
if there are other pieces of information we need to get out, this would be a good place to do it. Just, just a table full of flyers, right? Stephanie? So my experience is that, especially nowadays, people don't typically like to take flyers. Okay. So if you're going to do a flyer, I would just do one with a lot of inform, you know, a lot of information, like links to things. Like if you want more information about with links. Um, but then also it's fun if you can get, you know, do QR codes. Yeah, right. I and bring people to things like, you know, so thinking a little more electronically and not just relying on a table full of flyers, because I can also tell you that historically our events are either rainy or windy. <laughs> Very rarely do we get like a really nice sunny afternoon. Okay. So, um, and the windy is almost worse because flyers will go everywhere and tents okay. get knocked over and it's, you know. All right. So QR codes, QR codes and one flyer. But as long as we have the pace flyer, I think we ought to include that too for any any builders who happen to come by or people who do developers or developing or um, renovation just to have it there since we have it already. Yeah, Laurie, maybe some information on our CARP. Um, I think yep. page 23 of our CARP has the pie chart that shows percent contribution by sector. We should include that as well for education there. That might just be a poster or something we can maybe yeah. a poster to put on the um, table. Something for people to take a picture of. They can take a picture of it, right? They can have <laughs> different things they can take a picture of or take a QR code of, right? Jesse? Lori, if, if you um, had links for things i could print on a large format printer like that image that vasu is talking about and we could surround it by qr codes say like learn come to one of our meetings qr code read the carp qr code learn more about this qr you know and just kind of tape it to a table um i'd be happy to if you if you want to tell me what you want on it i'd be happy to format and print that out for you okay Thanks. Yeah, the, the one problem that I found with QR codes in the block party is not a lot of people were actually scanning. So, I mean, the flyer is nice because you could just give them, hand it to them, and they can look at it at some point. Um, I'm all for saving paper, but it wasn't very powerful. And, and I hate to say this, but a lot of us oldsters really had to struggle to figure out what the hell to do with the QR code. I mean, I've had to now cry. It's really fun now that I figured it out. I see old people trying to take pictures of QR codes and wondering why their camera isn't taking them to the link. <laughs> so, you know, you need an app to do this. That's um, so that was, you know, to, that it's not always obvious. If you're not a kid and you haven't done it a million times, it's not really obvious what a QR code does. A link might be more useful in some cases. Well, we yeah, maybe instruct. Yeah, sorry. Well, I was going to say you could also, you know, have instructions available and if you're all there or if you know some of you were there at certain times help people through it it's a nice way to engage with people too yes. but um again i i think you know big flyers it, they just people don't take them i've print i've had so many events where i print you know information out and i've done this i've had them at the table and no one takes them and then i feel like either i'm bummed out because people are taking them and then i find them all over the the common or yeah, okay. you know they don't take them and then i'm just like stuck recycling a whole stack of paper yeah i, I was just thinking stephanie maybe just one page with has all the information like yeah jesse was saying that we can well actually flyers that we can make multiple copies and hand it to people instead of multiple sheets per person it could be here's what you need to do for pace here's what you need to do for mass save and it's all in one page that we can just print out multiple copies. It just wasn't very useful, Stephanie, with the barcode and the blog party. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, you were saying? Yeah, Jesse had a. Well, I think also, I, to me, the, the, a big piece of the value of this is just the human interaction, the conversations, and just making sure we have one or two of us there throughout and. Right being and with a couple cups of coffee in us and really ready to talk and listen and engage people and sort of like we're kind of the face of this movement I think getting getting our our uh, getting psyched for that and, and being ready to hear you know getting people in and, and and hear what they're they're thinking um, I think that interaction is huge 
So Jesse, that was actually my next uh, action item here was I wanted, I already have a Google spreadsheet put together for people to sign up. I'm trying to get two people. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm gonna show up a half hour early at least um, to set up and I need someone at the end of the day, I think to do the cleanup. And then if we could take, you know, two hour shifts maybe, um, I think that'll cover the whole day, two at a time. So, so Laurie, can I just jump in here? Yeah. Setup is from eight to 10. Eight to 10. You don't okay. want to set up a half hour before because a lot of people tend to wait and then show up and then there's a scramble. So it's really better earlier. Plus, um, I feel like I can tap you all for helping other people set up. So okay. if you guys get up early, you know, set up early, then we can help other people get set up too. Okay, I'll be there as early as I can stand. But if somebody else wants to help with that, that'd be great. And then if we can get at least two hour shifts the rest of the day, uh, two people at a time, um, that would be good. Um, Andra has her hand up. Well, I didn't mean to. You you can finish, Larry. No, that's all. I just I, I just want to make sure it's okay for me to send that sign up sheet around outside of this meeting, right? Um. Why don't you just um. Um, can we just share it now okay. and see if we can, uh, or maybe we don't have time. Uh, actually, maybe not. That's no. why I'll it offline. Laurie, yeah. why don't you, yeah, why don't you just have me send it out and ask people to sign up? Okay, good. That's what I'll do. I'll send you the link, Stephanie, and then you can send it around. Um, okay. Do we still need to talk about specific topics or how things are going to be? Laurie, any support that you need? If we're talking pace, what information does Don need to give you? Let me see what I can pull together. And if I need anything, I know who the right person to contact is. And I think I'm allowed to do that as long as it's only one person, right? Yeah. OK. So let me see what I can come up with. I'll try to do that. Um, if anyone has something they want to see linked there, send it to me. Same thing. You know, I'll start collecting stuff. The only other let's, thing. Let's I'll review it one time, Lori, before, or at least one time. Of course. The festival, the right. final actions we got. Okay, thank you. Um, so what what I wanted to uh, suggest was that um, we have a um, climate corner um, so that we're with um, the organizations that are also working, you know, for the same goals and you know so the people who we want to refer you know someone who wants to get involved are right you know over there <laughs> go talk to them right now right. you know um and i think synchronicity will happen um similar to what happened at the block party i can yeah i can certainly keep like a climate group i i've done that before about trying to keep certain groups like i've had umass in the past have a bunch of different groups and i've tried to keep them all together so i can do that with climate groups but well, um, if they have a climate group put them with us we don't yeah we don't have a i mean other than mothers out front i don't know that we tend to have a lot although i am trying to get the high school's um environmental action club to oh, table. Awesome. i think i think they're going to what about sure sunrise ahead. We'll want to have one and and um the Amherst climate act uh justice alliance we'll great well that. people need to let me know <laughs> i need contacts for those groups um and they need to do it sooner than later because i'm gonna probably start to send what about, information out and requests out yeah what about local energy advocates and if we can get electric we they could do an induction stove demo <laughs> making popcorn we'll we'll definitely do a no Demo. Yeah, we were also talking about mass save, right? Being there potentially. Well, we can try. There, um, usually there's like a CET, whoever it is that sort of, uh, you know, one of their program consultants will show up. And I think I've reached out to CET. I don't know for sure if they've responded yet. Um, they've been in the past, but I don't know if they have confirmed. And again, anybody any of these things that you're thinking of if anyone's going to do a demo please let me know you got to talk to me because i've got to start pulling this together um april comes so fast <laughs> so the sooner you let me know and the sooner i can sort of block things out the better yeah and, and Anna, just one comment to your comment about being together I'm, I'm good with that last time at the block party we had a prime spot 
and we moved to a, the corner. So I don't know, Stephanie, if you you allocate spots for everybody. I do all of this. I do it all. Okay. So when you, but what I, but I'm very organized about like if people, have, I will send an email to the entire distribution group. And I ask if people have requests for special placement that they send them to me. So at the time when I start mapping it all out, and I literally do this by hand on a big piece of paper with, you know, pencil and ruler. So, um, you know, I start mapping it out and trying to put people where they want to be. And I always try my best. I don't guarantee that I can always put everyone where they want to be, yeah. but I try my best. Okay. Stephanie, are there going to be any electric cars there? Any of local? Yes. Groups? So there's a group called Pioneer Valley Electric Automobile Association. They've been at every event. I've already talked to Kay, who is the organizer of um, and representative for that group, and she's already oh. told me they'll be there. So, and we have had. They always have vehicles there. Um, we've in the past. There was one year in particular where we were able to have um, people test out electric vehicles like to drive them on the road um we had car manufacturing companies represented there but the um i know that the farmers market is starting that same saturday so that whole spring street location won't be available um so it's always a little bit of a challenge it's like a great thing when they're there and kind of a challenge too because it's like less um, parking and less space for us to do some, some cooler things, but but the PVEAA is usually they have the vehicles displayed in the center of the event. We have them drive them onto the common and park them in the center. Cool. So um, awesome. And that, that's they're always there. All right. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Right. That's all I got. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, any updates from you? Um, I'm sort of uh, tapped out, and I think given the time, I'm happy to. I don't. I don't think I have anything like off the top of my head right now. I'm sorry. I'm tired. It's been a week. No, no. <laughs> so. No worries. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay. Any ECAC member updates? I just report. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Andrew. Um. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I just want to mention that um, it's, um, you know, new legislation season um, at, on Beacon Hill, and there's um, several bills that we might want to look at and recommend um, that the town say something about, you know, um, promote ask our legislators to co-sponsor they already are being asked but you know it, it, it there may be some things that we would like um a resolution on so maybe that's a, a future agenda item yeah i think i think some of those were specifically about getting uh the gas companies to stop overseeing mass save to put they're basically being asked to put themselves out of business right is that what you're thinking of Andrew? Oh, the, there's there's several I would I would point us. Okay. There's some good bills coming up through the system right now. Andre, do we want to talk about that next at the next meeting, or do you need a little bit more time? No, sure. Next meeting's fine. Jesse. Uh, oh. I'm already muted. I I just it was nice to see there was a good showing of ECAC uh members at the the coalition climate justice coalition event on saturday at the library i think don was there laura was there um andrew was virtually there um and it was a really impressive just <clears throat> an awesome reminder of sort of the youth movement and and i think my takeaway was there they've got a unique ability to speak truth to power in a, in a wonderful way. And I just, I found it to be, it was, it was cool. The next day I went to a Celtics game and I will tell you 16,000 people in a stadium did kind of outshine the like 40 or 50 of us in the basement in the library. And I'm just sort of like, how do we, 
how do we get this? How do we get the 15,000 people to go to the, the local climate? Um, <laughs> how many people showed up, Jesse? I, I don't know. The room was full. I, I, I don't know if there's a way to know that. But a lot of people and all ages, um, it was a, it was a good, uh, I found it to be a good event. Steve? I listened in to much as I could. Um, I, I heard a lot of sort of general talk about good principles towards climate issues, but I did not hear a lot of, I didn't think I heard a lot of specifics. Did, did you have a sense or what kind of level of awareness was there of like the Massachusetts clean energy, clean um, climate plan and the, the roadmap for 2050 and, you know, the particular things that need to be done to reach that decarbonization plan? My sense was this, the, the role of this event was to say, here are the groups in town trying to do this work we're trying to all come together and and work together it was it was in, entirely general i would say anything on the panel discussion or any other highlights jesse well I, jesse was a highlight he did a great <laughs> job <laughs> bringing you. bringing in the you know what he does well about the culture shift and it's we all are in this together i tried to make steve's point once but it, i kind of fell i gave myself a solid b minus um, no, i only heard yeah. once maybe i missed it but only once did i hear a mention that we need to stop burning fossil fuels and that was kind of disappointing to me that you know that the one thing that we absolutely need to do stop burning fossil fuels was not really much discussed. Yeah, and that was Laura Laura's feedback too. I think that, you know this is like, okay, but there wasn't a lot of concrete. I don't think there was anyone in that room who would question that. This was this felt more like a networking event to me. Okay, well, um, that... and 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 more of an event where like an anti siloing. <laughs> activity right one other takeaway that i had was i left asking myself the question of what would it look like to have someone from the high school on this committee hmm. that was my that was i walked out of the library thinking about that because um, they're articulate they're smart they will push us they're bold Stuff. Um, I was just thinking, I this is just sort of a semi-casual thought, but I've been driving around and in light of the concerns that that um somebody raised at our last meeting about tree canopy, I've been just driving around seeing a lot of trees on residential land coming down that like I'm like, I don't really know why those are coming down. Um, obviously, you know, people looked at them and so that's just like my drive by thoughts, but it also came to my attention recently that Tampa, Florida now just put new ordinances in place where like any tree 24 inches or greater in diameter, you have to have a permit to prune and any tree five inches or greater in diameter, you have to have a permit to remove. Um, so just food for thought, because <laughs> we obviously don't have anything like that. Uh, as far as I know, all of our regulations apply to public trees, none apply to private trees. And there are many municipalities where um, private trees are more in the conversation as far as active retention. If they're in a wetland there, that would change. Oh, here you mean. Yeah. And Stella, town trees extend a fair bit from the road right of way onto property, right? I think it's I think it's ten feet or yeah. That's not like a I wouldn't necessarily call that like a fair bit. It is a little bit. <laughs> well, what people might think is their their tree along the side of their road is is a protected town tree. Yeah, it's true, and I think people are normally aware of that. But still, there's like a lot of trees that aren't that. 
when you said coming down, you meant like intentionally cut down as opposed to being down by storm damage? Yeah, yeah, I meant removal. Okay. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't, this is maybe shooting from the hip a bit, but I don't think I'd wanna see this committee try to take that up. There's, there's already a feeling in Amherst that the rules are very, <laughs> difficult to deal with and people take down trees for all sorts of reasons and my, my neighborhood you can't take down a tree over six inches in diameter without the neighborhood association being involved so you know there there have been there are different reasons why people do it and i don't think we need to know all of them and uh trees are not really our problem our, our problem here we have lots of trees and the problem is we don't let our forest it's forest that we don't let grow for more than 60 years if you want a real thing to dig your teeth into work on that because that's when they be you know we we all the state forests are are, are um, cut every 60 years and that's just at the point where they start to be good carbon sinks and that's how we've been doing it that's why we have forests at all but it's sort of sad that it happens just as they start to become effective as carbon sinks well, Lori, I encourage you to come to the community tree conference <laughs> on the 28th and see if we can change your mind about the value <laughs> of urban canopy. Because uh, I do notice it's it's 631, but I would argue that it definitely, I, 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 I'm not sure that regulation and like putting these ordinances in place is under, is part of something we should be talking about. But I do think I do feel definitely think that residential canopy is something that that we should be talking about for a lot of reasons. And I think the, the community wants us to be talking about it. So I thought it, I thought it was maybe maybe worth raising. Thanks, Stella. And it's 628. Um, yeah, we can talk about <laughs> trees for two more minutes. Come on, <laughs> uh, Stephanie. I'm sorry, I, I do have a quick update that I wanted to share. Um, either I think it was last week, um, the High School Environmental Action Club invited me to speak to them just kind of in general about what I do and um, some of the things the town is doing about addressing climate change and um, sort of future careers for them, that kind of thing. But um, one of the things that I did sort of want to impart to them and some of the things we've talked about and something I've been thinking a lot more lately too is that um, with all of these things and recommendations that we might we make to people about, you know, um, using alternative technology, driving alternative vehicles, you know, all this reliance on technology, I feel like a lot of it is about lifestyle choices. And I encouraged them to really think about the choices that they make day to day, like walking as much as they can or using public transportation or using a bicycle. You know, again, I feel like we're, to me, I, I just keep feeling like it's really about not using as much energy, not using the fossil fuels, not wasting as much. You know, I just, I think we sort of need to really advocate for a sort of simpler lifestyle. And I just, I feel so strongly about that. Um, but I just wanted to share that. And part of that came from, um, having listened to a report on NPR on my way home from our last meeting that was about cobalt mining and I won't get into it now because we don't really have the time but yeah. it was truly upsetting to me and I felt like it's and it's related to rechargeable batteries um, and I just wanted to you know sort of think about that and um, you know think about what we're ad advocating for and even the things that we're advocating for that might be the lesser of all the evils still has trade-offs and consequences. So really what's the best thing is to really get people to think about their lifestyle choices. Yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, it's a behavioral change, right, Stephanie? Um, and so, and Jesse, I don't know if a question came up during the ACJA around that, on, around behaviors. Yeah, there was a great, someone, some, well, the comment, there was a, a little bit, there was a comment about, um, first of all, just Stephanie, I, yeah, big time. It's it's huge. But, you know, there was a comment about. Um, I might paraphrase to say, like we, to be careful that we're not saying buy batteries or electrify or buy solar panels. Like 
that's not the end goal. The end goal is to reduce emissions, to lower carbon, to sequester carbon. And those may be tools, but they have to be, have to be, have to be coupled with load reduction, which means insulating and wearing sweaters and walking more like across, you know, changing the way we eat, the way we travel, the way we behave is part of that whole load reduction piece that the technology piece can only do, can pair with nicely but it's, it, they need to go together, so. so I have another meeting. I Trees are also more. part of the load reduction, by the way. <laughs> All right. Um, for a actually, beautiful, a beautiful, amazing part of the load reduction, I might add. Um, All right, uh, let's talk about the action items for our next meeting or agenda. Uh, so we have, Andra legislative updates. The um, the new school building. We're going to have somebody I can't remember the name. Stephanie that, that Laura mentioned. Maybe it's in the notes. Andra. Kathy Schoen, I think. Kathy. Okay. Was there anything else for the next meeting? We don't need to talk about stretch code. Solar uh, John, did, yeah, the solar panel update for next week and then uh, transportation as well. John, did you have something for CPACE? Can't remember. No, okay. But there was one more that we discussed at the start of the meeting. But that should be good. But so, is that, it's, I mean, if I do connect with Claudia when she gets back, you know, I'm happy to just update that, yes, that's okay. moving forward. Sounds good. Thanks, Don. I'll, I'll look through the notes and, and tag anything that is okay. an action item. Yeah, that was the first 10 minutes of the conversation, Andra. Uh, I thought it was another one. Thank you. Okay, any public comments? We have Mark. Martha, any comments? Go ahead, Martha, you can unmute yourself. Oh, I would just like to ask, when is the sustainability uh, festival that you're all talking about? You kept talking about it and nobody ever mentioned the date. <laughs> April 22nd, April Saturday, 22nd. April 22nd from 10 to 4. It sounds good. So, <laughs> well, the League of Women Voters typically has a table, Martha. So, oh, um, okay, you know. I guess I'd better let them know then. Have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, whoever is the contact from the last time should have received an email from me, but um, if not, then let's check in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's all we have the time for. Thank you all for everything that you do. Have a great evening. Thanks, everybody. Bye.